Hi everybody, uh, welcome back. Unlike my other videos, this isn't an unboxing. Uh, this is more of an informative video, uh, like my WrestleMania one. So this is for Amazon Web Services reInvent. For those who don't know, reInvent is an annual conference that Amazon Web Services, AWS, uh, throws in Las Vegas, and it usually starts the Monday after Thanksgiving. So this year it's between, I believe, uh, December the 2nd, December the 6th. I'll, I'll post it down below. Uh, it covers the conference goes between six hotels. Let's just kind of show you the map. So there it is. It's between the Encore, the Wynn, the Venetian, the Caesar, the MGM, and Mandalay Bay. And then everything in between is what they call a sleeper hotel. A sleeper hotel is a hotel they worked out a deal with to get a better rate. I will say look up rates because if you have like uh, loyalty cards with these or um, if your company's paying for it, so you might be able to finesse something a little bit better. So look into rewards points. You know, just don't take them at face value saying we're the best. Really do your research for going out here. Uh, it's a pretty crazy conference there's so much going on uh but just to let you know uh registering for the conference they say it's 2099 but let's be honest it's 2100 dollars to register for the event now please make sure that you understand that registering for the event and reserving classes are two different things you can register for the event and not go to any course you can go to keynotes, you can go to expos, you can go to replay, uh, you can go to um, companies, parties, you can do all that stuff and never attend one course. That is up to you. However, you cannot reserve a course without registering for the event. So first you have registration and then you have reserving the courses. So please make sure you do that. Now, if you want to go to this event and you want to do it on your company's money, uh, they do have sort of like this little form letter that you can give to HR or your manager and say, hey, can you guys pay for me to go on this trip? Please understand that it is in your best interest. In, it is in your best interest to use a thesaurus to change some of the wording. Because if someone else is planning on going, then they don't they don't you don't want them to get like the same eight form letters. So switch up a little bit of the wording, put it in Grammarly, you know, give them a little bit something to read, give them a little bit some, some more oomph. Also, uh, if you go on company money, you may have to take their input on what courses you can take. And please be advised that you may want to ask if you can do one or two courses on your own, and then the rest are company approved courses just so it can be a little bit more fun for you. If, you, if you're if you not into containers like ECS or Fargate or EKS or ECR, this may actually get a bit boring, but your company will say, will say, hey, I want you to do all container courses. You're like, dude, I don't want to do that. That's not what I'm interested in. I'm, inter I'm interested in, you know, LL LMLs, I'm sorry, LLMs, uh, generative AI, uh, prompt engineering, you know, so maybe you can ask, can I just do one or two that's for me? And then the rest is all for y'all and, and try to finesse that the right way. Also, you want to try and get them to approve it before you register for courses. Because I have been to this, this year will be my eighth one. You are competing. If you're a first time, I understand that there are people like me who know the drill. We are there the moment registration says it's open and we are sitting at our computers at probably, I think it was 10 a.m. Pacific. So it's 1 p.m. my time. 12.59, I was on my computer going refresh, 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 refresh. We treat this like Comic-Con. We do not play with these courses. So I now understand that when you register for the event, I'm sorry if I'm looking down and looking at my notes. When you register for the event, you do get a 50% coupon code for your next AWS exam if you want to be certified. Uh, that will expire at the end of the year. So if you, uh, I believe registration is tomorrow, uh, June the 4th, 2024. If you uh, 
and that coupon code will be good until December 31st, 2024. So if you are, it, it, it that kind of bothers me because you only have to uh, retake the test every three years. So twice a year I've gotten this and it's been no good for me. Or I knew I wasn't going to be ready in time to take the exam by December. So it's like, it was just wasted. Let's be honest, it was wasted. Uh, it, are there any benefits to being um, certified at this event? Yes, there is typically, last year they didn't have one, but there's typically a certified party. It's held at the, um, I think it's Brooklyn Bowling. And they bring out the entire bowling hall and there's food and drinks and, you know, mirth and and mayhem and it's, it's a good time and then you have the certified lounge the certified lounge has food and drinks it has an enormous amount of outlets everywhere uh chairs they also have um headphones and you can hear another uh another course being given while you're there uh you can i've seen people just fall asleep in that room even though it's not quiet it is not a quiet room uh you get little lego men i should have brought mine down you get a couple extra pieces of swag. That's what you get for being certified. Uh, and then after that, about seven weeks later, you will get an email that says the session catalog has gone live. The session catalog will tell you a couple things. Number one, it'll give you the course number. Number two, the course name. Number three, information about the course. And number four, the type of course that it is. Uh, what you want to pay attention to is not only, you know, also what AWS products this thing is covering. So that's five things. Uh, one thing you want to pay attention to is the fact that they don't give you dates, times, or locations. Please take this time to go through this thing. It is going to be a long, long list. And it actually changes. Every now you'll see courses get added things taken away. Uh, if you notice a couple of them, uh, it will have the name of the course, a hyphen, and an R th or R3. What that means is that this is the fourth repeat. So you have AMI 101, AMI 101 R1, AMI 101 R2, AMI 101 R3. So the fourth repeat. Then you have hyphen RU or hyphen KO. That means that this class is taught in Russian or Korean. If that is your um, your first language and you feel more comfortable hearing it in your own language, please take the course in your own language. It is there for a reason. If I spoke another language as my first language and they had one for me that I wanted, I would do it. Don't, don't feel like you can't. We have people from all over the world coming to this conference. They're just trying to make it more open for everyone. Uh, a couple things about that also about the catalog session. Uh, if you like something, favorite it. This will come in handy later. Another thing you want to pay attention to is the type of course that it is. One of those is a builder session. So I'm looking at my old list. A builder session. I actually like the builder sessions because they're kind of like work workshops, but more personalized. So in a builder session, you have a teacher here, usually with a TV screen. And then you have a table here where people will sit around it. They will sit down with you and talk through step by step on how to do something. And if you have questions, you can just ask. It's a great one-on-one -on -one session. It feels like a one-on-one -on -one session, but it's really one to 10. And there's usually um, about five tables in a room, all with people. So if you're someone who's easily distracted by hearing someone else talk, it may be a little bit much. I, I get that. Uh, cause I remember on one course, the, the table to like the next table over was like a step ahead of us and I had a hard time blocking them out, but I do like these type of courses because I can ask a question on the spot while we're on this step and we're all kind of stepping through it together. That's a builder session. A breakout session is more like a, a school lecture. You have the teacher up front talking to the class and once they're done, you can ask questions. Uh, then you have chalk talks. Chalk talks are pretty much, they say, hey, you're working with this company using AWS products and your EC2s are costing too much money. How will you use AWS to fix this issue? Get together with your group at your table and talk this through, whiteboard it out and all that other stuff. Me being who I am, that's not my jam. 
I, I don't want to sit here and work out problems. <laughs> That's that's uh, in a group project for made up scenarios. For some people, I think that's more of a manager situation. If you're a manager, chalk talks are probably your best bet to go through. But I went to one and it just it just wasn't my jam. But hey, if it's your jam, please do what you do. I, I'm not gonna stop you from doing what you do. Um, excuse me. Another thing that happens is workshops. Workshops are usually, let me check my clock. They're usually, they're two hours long. Pretty much you have someone says, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make your own network channel using AWS tools. And you can do that. You can make your own televised channel. And here's a website to go to, to give you step by step instructions and go. And you just work. And if, and there are people, um, AWS gurus, if you come into an issue, something's not working, you raise your hand, they come to your table and they talk you through. Now, please understand that you need your laptop for these sessions. Read the description. They will often tell you, you need your laptop. Another thing is if they say you need Xcode on your machine, download that before. I made that mistake. I did not download Xcode and it, it took the entire two hours to load Xcode to my machine. So please read the description and know what's going on. Another thing is a lab. A lab is pretty much a room full of uh, laptops and computers. They'll tell you, they'll have a whole list of labs you can do. You have about um, an hour to do the lab that you want to do. And if you want to ask questions, there's usually one or two people in that room, but there's really no introduction. You just find a lab on the list. You do the lab, you walk out when you're done. Uh, and I believe they're, they're probably more, I know there's fireside chats. If those are like 20 minutes long. Usually all of you have something in common, like um, blacks and computers, indigenous and computers, women in tech, uh, men in tech. You know, they, they you usually have something in common and it's just a way to talk through things and, and get things done. And then you have what's called um, community activities. Community activities are usually keynotes, expo happy hours, uh, and I'll get into those deeper later. But you, you kind of get the gist of it. So if, you, if you're if you more into managerial stuff, I would say lean towards chalk talks and builder sessions. If you're more of the one do more of the engineering stuff, workshops, labs, still builder sessions, and breakout sessions is for everyone. But as you're going through the entire uh, catalog, favorite things. The reason why I say that is because I think it kind of gives them an idea of what classes we want. And then they add more on. I noticed that the last times that classes got added on, you got more repeats. So please favorite them. Now, uh, four weeks later, you will get an email saying the session schedule has gone live. What this means is that you have dates, times, and locations. So what do you do? You go to the ones that you favorite and you make note of their date, their time and location. And so I'm going to provide this grid for you down below. I'm going to provide my grid from last year, completely filled out. And then I'm gonna also provide a blank one for you to use when you want to. So I know this looks insane, but this is just how my brain works. <laughs> uh, so here you have your course names. Here you have the courses that I wanted to take. So green means it's something that I was really interested in. Yellow means something I was kind of interested in. And white was pretty much, let's just fill out some time if we have to. Uh, the type. And here is the location. And then you have the day of the week along with the time. The reason why I did it this way is because I can then say, hey, sort all the Monday ones, take out the, the blank ones, and then sort them by their time. And so if there were two of them that I wanted to take, what I would do is I would see if there were any repeats. So if this had, a, if two of these were both on Monday, and I, it, but one was on a Thursday, I would take the one that was on a Thursday for one of them, and then take the Monday for the other one. So it just kind of helped me plot things out. I'll provide a blank one of those, and my full schedule from last year. So you guys can know. Now you can schedule your classes three ways. Depth, which means you take 
a whole bunch of classes in the exact same thing. So if you're like, all I want to do is learn about generative AI. Every course you can take is about generative AI. That's it. I'm not judging. Judging. You can do depth where you take a class that's on a different, every single class you take is on a different subject. Generative AI, SageMaker, ECRs, uh, uh, EKS, uh, uh, Code Catalyst, Code Whisperer, um, uh, AMIs, Outposts. You can just take a wide range of classes. Another one is a mix of breadth and depth. Let's say you say, I'm gonna take six classes in SageMaker and the rest I'm gonna do a whole bunch of other stuff with. It is up to you. Now, what I said before is that if your company is paying for it, they may wanna say in what you take. That is up to you. Uh, I mean, that's up to them. So you might wanna have that conversation ahead of time. Now, word to the wise. Number one, please try to get your company to allow you to register before you have to reserve your courses because once the courses go the, the course schedule goes live in a week they will allow you to reserve your classes okay so you have pretty much a week to plot out how you're going to spend your reinvent so if they tell you like hey we won't allow you to we won't we won't know until a week before it starts please understand you're going to probably be waitlisted for everything you want to take Waitlisting can be okay, but you have to understand that number one, uh, the classes are only reserved up to 70% full because they do want to give waitlisters a chance. They understand that your company may have waited to the last minute to allow you to come. Number two, if you are waitlisted for anything that is 30, uh, I'm sorry, hour long, it is in your best interest to get to, uh, get, to get in the line an hour early. For workshops, legit hour and a half to two hours before it starts. I'm sorry, but that's how that works. Waitlisting is no joke and it it can make it rough because I know people who I can hear them like say, hey, I was in this line for two hours and I can't get in. Like this is insane. That's the good part about registering um, and doing it at the moment they tell you. So it's usually a 1 p.m. and it's five weeks before uh, reinvent. So please pay attention to that. And please try to get your company to allow you to register for the event before we reserve our classes. It would just make everything easier on you. Now, once you've gone through all of this craziness and you have made your schedule. So last year I made a couple, I'm gonna show you guys two of them. This is one schedule. I did not go with this schedule simply because I didn't, I was taking a lot of the same things. So I was like, huh, I'm going to spread it. I'm, I'm more of a, a, a breadth sort of person. I like to learn a whole bunch of new stuff when I go there and, and cover a lot of different courses. But in the end, this is my schedule that I chose. And when I release mine, you'll see a tab called final. This is the final one. So you can see most of the ones I got in here are green. Those are the ones that I really wanted to do. Um, I got a couple of yellows, kind of wanted to do, and then I have the blues. The blues are, I was contacted by AWS to do a research opportunity, and it was like, oh, you'll get an Amazon gift card if you do it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. You only got to threaten me with a good time. So it was about 30 minutes long to add a couple, ask a couple questions. Now understand that you may be asked to do stuff like that. Companies may get in contact with you and say, hey, we're going to have a party at Top Golf. You know, sign up today and come and hang out with us. Or we're going to rent out a, a suite at the Venetian. I've done that with the company. They've rented out a four bedroom suite with a pool, or I'm sorry, a hot tub and a bar and served drinks. And me and my friends were there and we all hung out. And not just female friends, a couple of the, guy, the guys that I work with came too. And we had a blast. So if you get invited to some party like that, go. It, it's not gonna kill you. There's gonna be pub crawls. It's gonna be everything you can even imagine. I mean, it's Vegas. I'm just saying. And then you have the expo. Uh, <laughs> the expo is its own craziness. It's pretty much companies trying to sell themselves to you. Uh, but we will get to that later. 
please understand that you need to number one register i'm sorry you need to register yes for aws then look at the session catalog when they become alive favorite everything that you like then when the um the schedule becomes live when they give you dates times and locations look those up and then plot out you know your classes that you want to take and where you want to be also keep in mind of the location now this map it's um it's cute that's the only way to describe it's cute but it's not realistic please understand that vegas is not this straight line if you've ever been to the strip in vegas you know there are escalators bridges just because of the way the traffic patterns flow it's not a straight line now they are there are shuttle buses your twenty one hundred dollars covers breakfast for five days lunch for four days the shuttle buses and your courses and keynotes and replay and all that good stuff now between the encore the venetian the wind and caesars there are walking paths for you to take so they really don't provide too many shuttles between them i would say if you have a course in this general area give yourself an hour in between courses to get from one to the other i know an hour may sound like a lot when you're going in between uh the encore and the caesar but you have to think about the fact that number one you have to leave. Number two, you have to figure out where the walking pass is. And number three, you have to actually find where the next course, where the next course is. And then if you're reserved, you have to get there 15 minutes before it starts. So an hour is really 45 minutes. And I don't care who you are. At some point you will be huffing it. Just, whoo. Okay. And you get in line. If you're traveling in between these group of hotels, and the MGM, I would I would still give yourself an hour. Uh, the buses run every 10 minutes. And I'm so sorry. The buses run every 10 minutes. And once you get on the bus, that can kind of determine how much longer you have. If you are the only person on the bus or there's only like one or two people know that you probably have another nine minute wait for that bus pulls off and leaves. If that bus is packed, it's probably going to leave in a minute. Now, where the bus drops you off may be nowhere near where your classes are. If you haven't been to Mandalay Bay, which is down here, it drops you off at the parking area in the back. However, you have to walk past the aquarium. You have to then go through uh, metal detectors. Then you have to probably go up like two or three escalators to get to where you need to be. Some of these, like the Caesar, the Caesar's pretty close. The the bus drop off is pretty close to where the courses are. But Mandalay Bay is not close. Venetian is in the basement level. You still have to go up several flights of steps. And it just so happens that you'll probably have a, a course on floor four and it dropped you off in the basement. And then you have people who just are just la di da because they don't have a class. And so they don't want to, they want to stand on the escalator on both sides when you're trying to run up. Seriously, people, you stand on the right and you walk on the left. I don't care if you and your best friend wants to talk to each other while you're going to sleep. Please stop. Please stop. Move out of people's way. You are now a bump and you're getting on my nerves. Another thing, once you get to the top of the escalator, move. Don't just stand there at the top or the bottom. I don't understand people who get there and just dead stop. Move. Move to a wall, move to some type of column, some type of, move someplace else and then figure out what you're doing next. Don't stand at the top and don't stand at the bottom trying to figure it out. Everybody behind you is now slamming, slamming into you because you just dead stop because you forgot the other people were existing on the planet. Uh, <laughs> sorry, but keep that in mind when you plot out where you're going to be. If you notice that this day, it started off in me being at the Mandalay Bay. And I stayed there for hours. Then I went to the Expo Center at the Venetian. 
because I wasn't in a rush to get to the expo hall because it wasn't a timed event. I was just killing I was just killing some time because my next course was in the Caesar and I knew that the walk between I can leave here and give myself an hour in between and I wasn't gonna be stressing. But once I figured out that one of these was in the Mandalay Bay, I decided to stay in the Mandalay Bay for most of that day. So keep that in mind when you're scheduling your courses. Now, when you have all your courses figured out, unfavor anything that's not on that, that's not on this sheet. Anything that's not on there, unfavorite it. Only favorite the things that you want to do the night before. Check to make sure that everything you favored is still there. The reason why I say that is because last year I signed up for a course and the night before it disappeared. Well, I didn't sign up for the course. I favorited a course and the night before it disappeared. And then the next morning when I logged in, the day that we had to reserve our classes, it came back, but it had, it had different date, time, and location. And I pretty much got really annoyed. I was able to still fill it, fit it in, but I had to be careful for my timing now because then I had to leave one class early, like 15 minutes early to get to that one on time. And I timed myself on how long it would take me to get from one to the other. And I realized when I, it was between the MGM and the Mandalay Bay and I timed it and it took 40 minutes. So I knew that I had like an hour break between the two and I didn't want to risk it. So I left that workshop early and it actually worked out in my favor because I finished the workshop early. So I was able to leave and I had enough time to make it. So please understand that timing is very crucial. Now, once you have everything that you plan on doing favorite it, you wait until the day they say, hey, you guys can log in and actually reserve your classes at this time and then sit there and just go refresh, 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 refresh. Uh, it's usually 10 p.m. Pacific, which is 1 p.m. my time. I'm there on 12.59. I block out 30 minutes of my work schedule as busy. Do not bother me. This is not a game. This is not a drill. This is real life. So when it comes to that, what you do is you hit refresh, refresh, refresh. Once you see that reserve button, you go right to your favorites and then you go down the list. Reserve, yes. Scroll, reserve, yes. Scroll, reserve, yes. Scroll, reserve, yes. Scroll, reserve, yes. Because everything is now there for you in your favorites. You don't have to sit there and go searching and typing in course names and all that insanity. No, 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 no. You have favorited everything. It is now listed for you. And it is 10 times easier to do it that way. Take it to a veteran who's been to seven of these things, six of them in person. One was completely online because of the, uh, the pandemic. But this year will be number eight, seven in person. I'm doing my best to make sure that you guys get to reinvent, schedule your reinvent, and have a good time. Please, it's supposed to be a, it's learning, but it's supposed to be fun. Uh, and like I said, if your company's paying for it, they may try to regulate your fun. Uh, just ask if you can do a one course for yourself. Uh, go to a keynote that you're interested in. Uh... There's replays, which is a party. I will discuss that um, probably in another video. Uh, this is video number one. This is all about getting you up to the event and getting you registered and reserved and all that good stuff. So with that being said, if you have ever been to reInvent, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what I forgot because I'm pretty sure I forgot something. Uh, I will cover another video about what you do when you're there. Uh, but this is all about getting you guys there. Uh, if you've ever been to Reinforce, I've never done Reinforce. Let me know how Reinforce is. Uh, if I got something wrong, please let me know. Uh, if you have your own sheet that you want to share with people that you created yourself, please share that below. All right. So now this is done. I'm going to start my next video <laughs> about what to do once you're at reInvent. So I hope you enjoyed this session. Let me know what you guys think. Are you going? And I hope to, I really hope to see you guys there and I hope you learn a lot. In life, there's black and white. But with me, you are getting one shade of gray. Bye guys. See you every event.